Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are returning to the land of serendipity and specifically to a series of books about a unicorn called Morgan. Previously we looked at the two volumes that I own that have a princess in them. Now we are beginning our journey to look at the two that do not. Uh, those two are Morgan and You and Morgan Morning. I wanted to go with Morgan and You first because Morgan Morning's kind of sad. Also, I double checked the copyright dates. They were both published in the same year, so I can. Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, they both say 1982, though this one, um, my copy of Morgan You is the 10th printing from March of 88. Ah. All right, and now Morgan and You, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Love is the most important possession we can have. And the cover is very nicely illustrated. I really like how the tree is done and the leaves. I always like the fonts they use on these books too. And it is a U. And suddenly I remember that song from MLP. <laughs> and they're tiny U's. Don't ask me to sing, please. <laughs> Dedicated to my best friend and my eyes so that others may see. Robin James. Stephen. So the author dedicated the book to the illustrator. That's very nice. And the way he phrased it is really cool, too. Referring to the art. Yeah, that it's his eyes that others may see. Whoa. That is an awesomely detailed illustration there. Check out the leaves, the moss. Wow. Far beyond the horizon, where the sun is always a little warmer, lies an emerald island, an island where all things magical and real live together in perfect harmony. As opposed to the other books. <laughs> it is here that you might find a magical, mythical dragon frolicking with common field mice in the meadows. Well, now I kind of want to see that. An island where the sun and moon come together to paint the sky the most amazing colors and hues. It is in this place of myth and magic that the most magnificent unicorn that was ever born lives and kicks his heels to the sun. His silvery coat reflects the golden sunshine and sends it flashing high into the crystal blue sky. His mighty horn is twisted in the most gentle fashion, like taffy that has been turned and turned. As he tosses his head, the horn points, always, to the top of magical Morgan Mountain. It points to the exact spot where, many years before, Morgan was given his magical horn when, by chance, he happened to be touched by the morning star. So his head's always pointing the same direction? Because he says it's always pointed towards the mountain where he got his horn, so, yeah. It says as he tosses his head, so maybe it's only when he tosses his head that it ends up pointing. I like the texturing in this book. I mean, there's just so much detail on all the leaves. This must have taken forever. No wonder there's that dedication in front of the book. Yes, though looking at Morgan in this image... He doesn't have as much muscle definition as the animals that have been illustrated in the other books. Uh, I think he has pretty good definition. I mean, look at the chest and how the muscles form around the front legs. Yeah, it just doesn't seem quite the same as Flutterby or Morgan in the other two books. Mm. Not that it doesn't look amazing. It looks absolutely stunning. Morgan's best friend in the whole world was a short, dumpy sheep, simply called you. His fur was dirty white and curlier than the tail of a newborn pig. Wasn't his best friend a girl? Or am I thinking of the wrong books? No, no, you're, you're thinking of a princess who lived in a castle and went around winding clocks. Or a much younger princess who tried to catch him as she caught butterflies. Yeah, yeah, that's who I was thinking of. There was nothing magical about you, except for the fact that he loved Morgan and had a heart cast of the purest gold. Okay, hopeful. 
hopefully no one greedy goes after him because a heart of gold. I know. I mean, it was even cast. Day in and day out, Morgan and you would romp in the meadow and the forest of the magical island. They would graze on the lush green grasses that grew at the base of the spreading umbrella trees. And then suddenly, as if both were bitten by a bee, they would gallop off, Morgan with his head and tail held high, and you bounding alongside. You were waiting for me to talk about the pretty picture of that wonderful you just bounding along this horse. I don't know if you could actually keep up. And oh my god, the details in the backgrounds just keep going. How long did it take this poor artist? Oh my, oh my god. All would have been happiness and light were it not for the little sheep feeling that he wasn't Morgan's equal. Morgan is so beautiful he would say to himself. I wonder what he sees in ugly me. Early one morning as Morgan lay sleeping, you slipped away and wandered down to the lily pond at the far end of the meadow. He looked at his own reflection in the early morning light and shuddered in total despair. What I need, you said, is something to make me really special. So he thought and he thought and he finally knew what it was. A magnificent horn just like Morgan's. So he set about to make one. The illustrations just keep going in this book. The, just the textures on the grassy meadow and the only thing that's kind of light on the illustration really is the reflection. It's kind of mild. It doesn't really have that sparkle and life that a reflection of water has. But everything else in the scene is just fabulous. And yes, we're looking at an illustration of a sheep staring into a pond. With twigs and leaves and a little bit of mud, he fashioned a horn and stuck it on his head. Then, oh so very carefully, he walked back to where Morgan was sleeping. Ahem, he said to the sleeping unicorn. Do you notice anything different about me? Every guy shudders whenever they hear that line. Uh, <laughs> also, that's a nice horn. This must be a very dexterous little you to be able to craft something like that. Um, notice the spelling of you here is like a U tree, not you the female lamb, which would be E W E. Ah. Also, the sheep is male, so E W E would not make sense. Okay, thank you for correcting that. But same still. Must be very dexterous. De dexterous. Must be very dexterous. I'm still saying it wrong, but I don't care. <laughs> Morgan woke with a start and saw his favorite friend standing before him with a glop of mud, shaped kind of like a horn, stuck on his head. He couldn't help himself and burst out laughing. That looks like a very amused unicorn in that shot. I mean, just look at the smile on his face, like, really? Actually, the horn looks very well constructed. Yeah but still looks like mud and twigs on his head. Well, that's what it was made from. Well, twigs and leaves. We don't really see the leaves so much. I see twigs and I see mud, leaves not so much. You began to cry large tears, causing some of the mud to drip down his cheeks. Well, you don't have to laugh, he cried. I was only trying to look like you. But why would you want to look like me? Asked Morgan. So... You told Morgan how he really felt about himself. Morgan listened, and when Yu's tears had dried, he said, I like you just the way you are, but if having a horn would make you feel better about yourself, I'll take you to the magical Morgan Mountain. There we will see if you can be touched by the morning star. You would really do that for me? cried the sheep. Of course, said Morgan, for you are my best friend in all the world. And with that, they set off for the magical mountain. Looks like a very pleasant walk. Yes, nice, clear, winding trail through lovely grass and trees. I'm just going to say it again, a little of detail. Wow. Yes, and remember, we've gone through quite a few of the serendipity books already. So we already know that Robin James is an amazing illustrator. They traveled the whole day, across the meadow and down the narrow, twisting path that led through the forest. 
They crossed the bubbling brook and swam the raging river, stopping only once to let you rest his tired little legs. Finally, as the sun was setting, they arrived at the base of Morgan Mountain. Surely we will rest the night here, puffed the tired little sheep. No, said Morgan. We must be at the very top of the mountain before dawn, or all is lost. Does it have to be dawn of a particular day? They set off again on the trail and climbed high onto the mountain itself. You know, I now have a theory that chronologically this book takes place before he meets the girl. I think it may. Also, in the other two books, he and the girl did not speak in words. And with you being a mundane creature and not a magical one, he probably has a normal lifespan, and Morgan does not. And there's lots of nicely illustrated flowers in this particular shot. And ferns. We had some flowers on the previous page as well. Yeah, I just forgot to make note of them, so I'm talking about them now. Also, these are slightly more detailed than the other flowers. They have more shading on them compared to what was in the previous shot. Huh. They're slightly more detailed, but the previous shot, yeah, I can see how they are shaded now. Before, I didn't have a memory of them being shaded, but these are shaded a little bit more detailed than the previous shot, though these are also closer. Mm -hmm. They climbed and they climbed in the evening twilight as the stars glittered about them. At long last, with dawn fast approaching, they reached the summit. Oh, what will happen at dawn? You asked nervously. A bright star will lift from the edge of the earth, said Morgan, and if we're really lucky, it will come near us and you will have your horn. With the darkness of night settled around them, they sat down and waited for dawn. So we're talking about the sun. Kinda. Okay. Oh, the colors. Very nice colors. Very nice blue-greens for the grass, and the sky is a very nice deep Night blue with splotches of lighter color to give that kind of hazy sky look. And then of course you have little white dots all over the place for the stars. And a nice bright yellowish dot for the moon. I don't really think it's yellow. Well, there's hints of yellow around the edge and inside the color. Slowly, the sky began to lighten. Just as Morgan had said, a large star lifted itself from the edge of the earth and began to rise. You stomped his feet in anticipation as the morning star rose higher and higher into the sky. Suddenly, it stopped in mid-flight and a loud, booming voice echoed out into the night. Little you, we know that more than anything else in the world, you wish to have the magical horn of a unicorn. But there is to be only one unicorn on the island at any one time. The only way for you to have your wish is for Morgan to give you his horn. But in doing so, he can never live on the island again and must come with us and ride the morning star forever. The ultimatums in these books! Oh my god! If you have a child with a normal horse, you'll die. Unless you go back to where you lived for before. If you want... To have a horn, you have to give up your friend forever. Wow. Just wait till we get to Morgan Morning. Oh, thank you. Prepping me for sadness. I said it in the very beginning that this was why we were doing this one first. Morgan looked down at his little friend and said, If you wish my horn, I will gladly give it to you. Without thinking at all, you shouted, Yes, I want the horn more than anything. Blink, blink. I don't know. Kind of sounds like a sucky trade. Also one that you don't necessarily have the right to make. Is this like when Rainbow Dash traded Fluttershy's services for a book? Something like that, yeah. Before little you could blink an eye, Morgan had disappeared and the beautiful horn was on Yu's head. Yu was so excited about receiving the horn that he shook his head from side to side. But he suddenly realized his newfound gift was not without its price. His friend was gone forever. Tears began to cascade like falling rain as he looked into the sky and followed the rise of the morning star. No, he shouted. Without my friend Morgan, I am nothing. 
Youth's cries were to no avail as the dawn brought the crystal sunlight and the morning star disappeared. Throughout the day, he stood on the mountain, weighted down by the guilt of having the horn of the unicorn. He cried all through the night, wishing he had never wanted to be other than he was. That looks like a very sad, I almost said you, but that also works, but that's a very sad little sheep, and that horn looks kind of big. Yeah, well, he got Morgan's horn, which means in the same dimensions and weight. In that brief moment of silence before the dawn, he wished with all his might for the morning star to appear. He wished and wished, and suddenly, just as it had the day before, the star appeared. Please, please, he shouted to the star. I must have my friend back, for without him I will surely die of loneliness. For a moment, it looked as though the star was not going to come near, but then it slowed in the sky, and you once again heard the voice. You wish to give up your horn so soon, little one, it asked, but you wanted to wear the horn to be special. No, said the small sheep. The love I feel for my friend is more than enough to make me special. The star paused as if deep in thought and then said, Your wish shall be granted, but the horn must be given back to Morgan, for he must always be a unicorn. If he must always be a unicorn, why did you ever agree to the transaction, Morning Star? To teach a lesson to the sheep. And so it was done. With that, the star disappeared. From that day on, and until forever, Morgan and you played in the meadows and fields on the Emerald Island. In those rare times when he didn't feel special, you would look up at his friend Morgan, and quite magically, a small crystal horn would appear on his head, built entirely from love. Oh, how sweet. Also, here's the definition you were talking about in the muscles and stuff. Mm-hmm. They just had to be closer. Yeah. Is we also had it in the shot where Morgan was looking very amused at you with his fake horn. Mm. But that's more of a uh, headshot. Also, well, no, Morgan could tell him, but I'm like, how would you know unless he saw the crystal horn in the water? But apparently it only appears when he's looking at Morgan, so he'd never see it in the reflection in the water. When you look with envy on friends that you have found, think of the horn of Morgan and the love of you abound. What a nice and lovely statement. Yeah. Don't be jealous of your friends because the mere fact that you are friends is special. And one last nice illustration with some ferns, the sheep and Morgan laying down next to each other, with the sky in the background, branches overhead, moon, stars... All that wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. So, thoughts? <laughs> you can see why I'm confused on how canonical these books are in connection to each other. Yeah. Because in the first two books that we read, we had a princess that we weren't even sure was the same princess. We only know that the unicorn was called Morgan in Morgan Mine. And we're assuming that because the book is called Morgan Mine. And then it's reinforced by the second book that we read being called Misty Morgan. And this one, the unicorn is very clearly named Morgan. Yeah, all a bit confusing. Also, pardon any running footsteps you hear in the background. Kitty has found crazy time. And if you don't know what crazy time is, apparently you don't have a cat. And I'm just going to say this because I remember Morgan Morning quite well. So, coming back to... Yeah, early on, the exact spot where many years before, Morgan was given his magical horn when by chance he happened to be touched by the morning star. So we know that Morgan wasn't always a unicorn. Apparently, according to the Morning Star, there can only be one unicorn on the island at any given time. So, did something happen to the previous unicorn and they picked Morgan? Did they not have a unicorn and they went, we're going to make one? Yeah, very um, interesting rules this place has. 
quite. Also, I still want a picture of the dragon frolicking with the mice. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a cool image. And no, I'm not drawing it. I don't have the time. Especially if I wanted to match the illustrations in this book. Oh my god. Yeah, as lovely as your sketches are, the amount of time it would take you to go from a sketch to this kind of detailed work. Somewhere around 20 to 30 hours. Yeah. So, sorry folks, not gonna happen. But I bet somewhere on the internet someone has drawn it. So after you check out all our links, you could go Google that if you want to see. And this has been Morgan and You, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, we actually now have a ton of Ember's Reading Room, so even if you pick playlists by series, there's enough for several entries. And if you don't feel like more reading, we have plenty of pop culture in the main channel section. Our thoughts on, well, almost anything and everything, within reason. Enjoyed this book and would like to pick up a copy for yourself? Please see below for an Amazon link. Odds are serendipity books are probably still in print, so if we can find it, we'll put a link there for you. Just feel like shopping? Try the Ebates link and get cash back for shopping at stores you probably go to anyways. Amazon and Ebates are not affiliates of or in any way associated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.